Welcome to 843 TV. I'm your host, Lisa Richardson. And I'm your host, Annalisa Itkor. And today we are in Osprey Village Thrift on Main. And we're going to be learning all about how Osprey Village is coming into our community. First up is Jerry Manuel. He's the executive director. Also, we have David Green in charge of business development. Then we have Julie Kuntz joining us. She's the director of operations. And finally, Channing Heiss, who is in charge of communications. So stay with us and stick around to watch this episode of 843 TV. Where communities come to speak. Eight four three TV, where the Low Country comes to speak. Eight four three TV, where communities come to speak. Welcome to eight four three TV. We are here at the Osprey Village Thrift Store on Main, which is a fantastic place, and we can't wait to look around later. Yeah, I've already started shopping. <laughs> And joining us today, we're going to be talking with some of those involved. And first up, we have Jerry Emanuel. He's the executive director. Jerry, this is a very special place, a very special project. Can you just share a little bit about what is Osprey Village? What is its goal and mission? The mission is to create a village with a purpose. And that's why we want to develop out in the uh, area outside of uh, Bluffton and, and in Jasper County, across from Oldfield, our village for people with developmental disabilities to have the opportunity to live and be in a place where they're free, open, sharing of themselves with their neighbors and friends, other family members, and be able to part of their community. It's a desperate need of folks within this area, within the whole state of South Carolina. There's over 5,000 people on a waiting list mm. and close to three to 400 in our area here in Buford and Jasper County. And this has been a dream of many families it's taken a long time to get to where we are, but we're on the, on the verge of being able to develop this community. Wow. So the community helps those with physical disabilities. As well as mental disabilities okay. as well. It gives them opportunities to work, to be employed, to do all kind of things that they need help with. Sure, over the years, people with disabilities were put in institutions, were put aside, left at home. Mm. And, and many of our folks work in the community now, and more that want to, and of course, if you know anything about our area, there's a need for workers. Yes. And our folks can be a big support to this as we have seen our folks be placed in Publix, Kroger's, other uh, areas of McDonald's, working within the community, working through the PEP organization. So it's, it's something that needs to be developed so that they can have a life just like you and I. Absolutely. That's great. This is Absolutely. a wonderful thing to, to learn about for sure. How do you get involved? Well, I, I, I moved uh, here. Blame me, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I moved here permanently to retire five years ago from Ohio. Just like half a hill. Now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, as I found out. But we uh, had visited here many times, you know, over the years. And then I was, went attended a Knights of Columbus meeting, which I'm a member of. And they gave my background, which is 40 years of working with people with disabilities in Ohio. Uh, at both the state and local level. And David, right away afterwards, came up to me and says, would you be interested in being part of an, a program? So I volunteered. And then from that, yeah. the board has asked me to step in in the role of executive director to complete the process and complete their mission uh, over the next few years. So it's been exciting. That's great. Now, I, I understand that there's a new project in the works, the neighborhood development. Right. Can you update us a little bit on that progress? Sure. As I mentioned earlier, we had land donated to us late last year out in the uh, East Argent development project that's going on across from Oldfield uh, Plantation. Uh, a gentleman by the name of Jack Fisher out of Atlanta, Inland Capital, donated 63 acres of that area to us to build on 25 a community that will be integrated within all the other aspects that's going to go on out there to the the Y, the other stuff that will be built around us and part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now we're just waiting for, of course, this happens with any project city to complete all of the, the plans and the approvals so that the road can get completed sure. and we can start our infrastructure. So we're hoping 19 will be our big year to begin. What are some of your general goals for 2019 in terms of Osprey Village? Well, it, to, probably the primary is make sure we get the message out to as many people as possible that still don't know if this is ever going to really happen. 
uh, the exciting part that yeah. what has been dreamed about is now a reality. Great. Yeah. And that it will be happening. Secondly, then to find investors, people who are interested in supporting this as a planned development that we hope will be not uh, in debt, but able to be fully paid for through donations, state matching grants, and mm -hmm. share that message and make it not only profitable, but a local initiative. Great. You mentioned there's three or 400 people on a waiting list. What is the process to get on that waiting list? How does that all work? Uh, David can explain <laughs> that to you probably better than I. He, he is a, he's it's a complicated, <laughs> to say the least. South Carolina doesn't make it easy for people mm -hmm. or parents with disabled children to get the services they need. Uh, it, right now, you have many families who are worried about their educational process within the sure. schools. But mm -hmm. no one is preparing them for when they turn 18. Yeah, what and when they point. become yeah, adults, uh, the families don't know where to turn. Mm. Uh, as well as a number of our parents are aging yep. and mm -hmm. have no real plans or want to make plans and don't know how to make them. Because right now, in Beaufort County, if you had a child who needed residential support, more than likely you would have to leave the area to go find it someplace and be separated from your son or daughter. Mm. What we hope to do in this village is families able to have a place not only know they're safe mm. and they're, they have friends and they're close by and they don't have to worry. Right. Okay. Right. That That's the biggest concern most worry of Worry is probably the biggest key to that. The peace of mind that you can have as a caregiver, uh, a parent or whomever, that's, it's a big thing. And, and one of the things, I mean, each family has different needs. Each family has different ideas of what they want. But our village will be able to be addressed by them of what they want, not what we want them to do. Right. That's the uniqueness of what we're trying to do. Yeah. We're not putting them all in one place right. to do all the same things. They're right. all going to have their individual lives. Mm -hmm. They are going to have choices. They're going to be part of a community sharing their wealth and their abilities within the friends around them. And it's, it's, a, it's a concept that we get uh, on our website many questions around the country. Is this really real? Is it really <laughs> going to happen? Can we yeah. be part of this? Right. How do we get on the list? I mean, talk about not only our local folks, the amount of people that inquire about how to uh, get on our list. I mean, all the visitors that Hilton Head has. Uh, sure. We get a lot of folks from Ohio who bring their children with disabilities, and we find out uh, from them they would like to live here, but they don't have a place for their son or daughter. Right. This and then is now they have an option. So much more to address here. Oh, and yes. We're very excited to talk to some other people that are involved Good. with the program. So we will be right back with more 843 TV. Thank you.